Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Roundtable. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. And today we get a special focus on your first time going to a Ren Fair. Yeah! It was so cool. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I do have, I have some questions written down, some discussion questions we can Did we do say that. what episode we can go we're on? down. Oh, it's episode eight. Episode eight. <laughs> we're just so excited to talk about the Ren Fair. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's gonna be fun. Then we'll go over our usual watching, reading, playing stuff at the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we went to a Ren Fair. We did. I went to Texas. So tell me about what what did you do in preparation. Oh. for the Ren Fair. Oh. Not as much as I probably should have. Honestly. Yeah. Like, I had every intention of going on the Scarborough website and, like, researching the different acts and things that would be available. Oh, yeah, me too. And then and I, life happened, and I just yeah. never, never, it never happened. <laughs> exactly, life happened. And I, and then we got there, and you were like, you bought a program, which was good. <laughs> And we, yeah. we sat down to watch, to watch something, and you were like, here, if you want to look at this so you can see what's going on. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah. It didn't end up mattering because we, we, I mean, we hit a couple of things that we really wanted to hit. Mm-hmm. But in general, the shows that we popped in on were just kind of like spur of the moment. Yeah. You just kind of wander upon things sometimes. Yeah. And actually, like one of my favorite acts was, well, I'll save that, but it was one that we had no intention of seeing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I know which one you're talking about. So, um, and then as far as my other, like, preparations go, like, as far as costume. Yeah, tell me about what you wore. Yeah. So I ordered a dress from Holy Clothing, which, like, they specialize in Ren Faire-esque garments. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and it was, we were there on Celtic weekend, so I knew I wanted something green. And they had a special on, like their emerald green clothes. Mm -hmm. So I got this dress. um, And then I got a petticoat to go under the dress. And the first one I ordered, like, was like the, I couldn't get it over my bum. I get it over (laughs) my head, but then I couldn't pull it down. It's hard to order things online. Yeah. Especially when it's... (laughs) Sizing is so hard. Sizing is so hard. And it's a garment that I never wear. Like, I don't wear yeah. a petticoat in real life. So you don't know, like, how is this supposed to feel? Where is it right. supposed to sit? Like, yeah, it's hard. So then I was, and it was kind of cutting it close to the wire on when I was leaving for Texas. So I was like, well, I could order another one and try a different style that I think would be better. Or I could cut this one and like add a button on it so that I could like, or a tie or something so that, so that I could like mm-hmm. pull it down instead of having to pull it up. Um, so I ended up finding one to order and it worked out much better. It was overall better. The elastic band on it was better so that I could, it, it was, it worked out really well. So yeah. that was my, my mishap with the, with this petticoat Mm -hmm. (laughs) deal. I ordered a belt that was perfect. I ordered a pouch, um, to go on that belt, which also worked out perfect. It fit my phone and my little coin thing, like my little card and cash thing. Perfect. Um, and I also made myself skirt hikes, which I didn't utilize much, but I made them. (laughs) And oh, you, you, oh, you made them yourself. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Um, I made them out of pretty fabric that I had. Um, and I and I did end up clipping my water bottle to one of them for most of the day. So that actually mm-hmm. freed up my hands quite a bit, which I liked. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I also bought... Ooh, I bought um, elf ear things. Like pretty jewel... Not jewel, but like beaded wire elf ears. Mm-hmm. which didn't last very long because it was hot and they kept like slipping and they were getting caught in my hair. So, but they, but they yeah, were They pretty. looked really cool for yeah. the first hour. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, these have to go away. 
Yeah. So but that's okay. Nuts. That's okay. Maybe next time if you wore them and just like pulled your hair back. You yeah. Know? I think if I did my hair differently, it would be fine. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe next time I go, I won't have any hair. Like maybe, bald. maybe Not just bald, but like. <laughs> chop it off. Chop it off. Do something, do something crazy. Yeah, maybe. You never know with um, me. Yeah. I do like to chop it's true. my hair this off. Is the, this is the longest your hair's been in a really long time. It's crazy. And it's driving um, me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, for my costume, I a lot of mine was recycled from last year. But mm-hmm. so like the pants and the boots were the same. The tan shirt that went under my tunic was the same. I did order a new tunic. It was blue with like some gold trim. That's really um, cool. And that that worked really well and that looked really cool. Um, I was really pleased with with that. And I also got a new green cloak thing. That was really cool. Um, yeah, we got to talk about that because you wore that thing the whole day. And it was yeah. so hot. You know, I was committed. I powered through. I, I was committed to the look and the aesthetic. And I drank a lot of water. <laughs> you did drink a lot of water. But I, you were, um, you just looked so hot. Also, you had that cool hat on. Which I think... Would, yeah, my Robin Hood yeah, type hat. It had like yeah. corduroy on it. So I imagine it was also hot. <laughs> yeah, I was committed. It was going to... Yeah. It, and it, and it, you know, I lived. Yeah. I didn't pass out. No, you didn't. Um. Ooh, I didn't talk about my shoes. I want to know about your shoes. Okay. They were you, boots. You were wearing boots. That I got online. Okay. They are technically a little big, but I put inserts in them, which takes up some, some space inside, so they actually end up working okay. Hmm. Um. And since they have inserts, there's a good amount of cushion. Because if I didn't have those inserts, that would have been a bad, 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 bad time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my shoe situation. Hmm. Uh, I, you had well, Tevas? No, I had Chacos. Chacos? Chacos. I am uh, notorious for never picking the right shoes ever mm-hmm. for anything. Like, I'm always like, I'll make a decision, and then halfway through whatever event I'm at, I'm like, wow. Not a good choice. Every Blisters. time. No matter what it is. State fair. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even make it like a full hour and I'm like, wow, I I, I didn't didn't choose well yet yeah. again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I but I went into this with like, I'm because I know that once my feet get hot, I am just miserable. Like if my feet yeah. are hot and they're in an enclosed shoe, I cannot stand that feeling. So I knew I wanted sandals, but I knew that any of like the decorative sandals that I have that I wear like to work and things, um, they have zero. It's just basically walking on the ground. So I, I ordered Chacos. I tried to break them in. I think I did a pretty good job. So all in all, I think this was the best I've done picking shoes for an event. <laughs> and I'm very proud of myself. Yes. If the cushion's good and you're not, your feet aren't in a ton of pain at the end, that's I job mean, well done. It was. I was in quite a bit of pain the day, like, but also it was just the hot next day. and it had been, a, yeah. yeah. And but it, it it's it's healed up pretty quickly. So mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time thinking about my feet leading up to the Ren fair. <laughs> like I probably thought more well, about my feet than most of the other stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's all walking. Right. Um, you walk a lot. You do. You walk a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's the the outfits that we had. Oh, I also had, um, I had my belt and my mm-hmm. pouch and my, see, I had a bunch of stuff decked out that I had gotten last year at the Ren Fair. So I had, like, my cup. I yeah. had my my scroll map of, of Middle Earth on my, on my belt. And I had um, the foam sword of of Andrew that I got last time Mm -hmm. I actually managed to get like a a frog sheath so it's like it's like a sheath that doesn't cover the whole sword it just kind of fixes it to something Mm -hmm. and so I had that attached to a belt that was like an over the shoulder type situation um not like behind the back like a back sword it was like it was still hanging at my side but it was like a strap that hang that hung down from the shoulder yeah um 
and it worked really well. I was really pleased with how it all came together. Yeah. And no, your yeah, your think, outfit was great. I think we all uh, we all did well. I think so even too. the people we went we went with. So yeah, um, we went with. Well, it was me, you, Hope, my wife, and also Sam and Sarah were there. Uh, yes. Sam is Hope's brother, and Sarah is Sam's wife now. Right. And so we all got to go, and we've mentioned them on the podcast a yeah. lot. And so it was <laughs> you got to you got to meet them, and that was fun. Which, like, I've met Sam before. A couple times, but I had not met Sarah before. Right. So um, right. that was great to finally like put a face and like a person to mm-hmm. the person we talk about a lot. So, and she's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we all we all did good on our costumes though. We Sam did. got a new a new uh, uh, Sam got a new feather hat or yes. feathered feathered hat that was like a real mm-hmm. leather, mm-hmm. Um, and that looked very very cool. Yeah, it looked real sharp. So. Yeah. And Sarah got a little owl stuffed animal, which was super cute. Not going <laughs> to lie, low-key jealous. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cute little owl. I knew you would be. <laughs> um, so what were your, like, going into the Ren Fair, did you have any expectations? Like, what were you thinking it was going to be like going in? Was it was it, was it it just, like, no expectations, just going to see what, it, what it's like or, or what? Um. Okay, so if, so if we have listeners that have gone to Ren Fairs before, they're going to think that I was totally naive, which is fair, mm-hmm. because this was very naive of me. But, like, when I envisioned this, and I even looked at the map of the grounds, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I thought that we would, like, go in and choose a path, and we would follow the path, and we'd see everything. Like, we'd look... we. Like, I was thinking, like, the State Fair when you go into the Expo yeah. Hall and you can just, like, snake your way through. Weave your the, way. Yeah, and just, like, see everything. Yeah. That's what I was planning on. But it became very evident the moment we walked through the gates that that was absolutely not going to happen. <laughs> and that it would, in fact, be impossible. It's almost laid out like a medieval village. And it's, like, there's winding roads that... Yeah. Kind of go off in dead end sometimes and it's mm-hmm. just it's a little bit of organized chaos. Yeah. Um it's it's definitely not like a perfect grid of No, not of at all. Paths. <laughs> and also once you um, add people to the experience, then there are bodies that you're right. also trying to navigate around. And there was a lot of people. Yeah, it was really busy. It was really busy, which was great. Um and I also was so lost. The whole time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I literally don't know where we are until we would run across something. And I'm like, oh, we, we did see that already. Okay. Now I know where we are. But it's hard because some of the vendors are selling really similar things. So you'd yes. be like, you'd think that you knew where you were. Then you're like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, no. That place was was slightly different on the other side. I don't know where I am. So it was, yeah, yeah it's it's hard. Yeah. That, that I remember that being the case last year, too, with Scarborough. Um, the Houston one, I feel like was laid out a little more in a way that made a little more sense. Yeah. Um, it was a little easier to navigate if memory serves, but yeah, that I was also lost like the entire time. And I was the one that had the, the program for a lot of the time. So yeah. it was just, it's a struggle. But I think that even if um, I had the program with the map in my hand, I still would have been like, I actually still don't know because the map is right. not entirely... It's a it's a decent representation, but like the sizing of things is not accurate. The scaling is off for sure. Yeah. The scaling is is pretty off. I think I I would I just want to get like a drone and just like get a get a picture from up up top and uh yeah, but Yeah. Yeah. It was that was that was one of the struggles. Um, and also um hillier. Like there were more like slopes oh, yeah. and things. So, mm-hmm. which also made it a little deceiving as far as like, yeah, lots were. of trees, lots of trees mm-hmm. too. Hard to like see specific landmarks because a lot of the vision is obstructed mm-hmm. beyond a certain point. So, yeah. no, I totally get if what you mean. If not by about. people, then by trees. <laughs> yeah, so. I get what you mean about being disoriented. Yeah. Um, what did you What did you think about like the overall? 
vibes. Oh. Um, yeah, go ahead and go into that. It, it passed the vibe check like 110%. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, these are like my people. One thing I remember when I uh, first went last year, I didn't expect the some of the buildings and structures to look like permanent like buildings. Right. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's just like, uh, it looks like the wall of a castle. And that I believe is there all the time because yeah. I don't think they can tear that down. <laughs> that looks like a permanent landmark here. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really cool that they have that space that they can just dedicate to that. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, all the costumes, um, of like mm-hmm. just the people there in general, Super impressive. Now, I know that some of them, like, you can rent costumes when you go in, right? Like, there's a spot that you can rent. Um, and there's also plenty of places where you just buy. You can buy right. a bunch of costume stuff in there as well. So some of the, like, there was, there was like, a couple we were sitting behind at one of the shows. And I was like, oh, they are, their clothes have, like, tags on them or something. But then I realized it was for the rental. Like, it was, they had tags mm. on them because they were rented. And they looked really good. So Mm -hmm. I think if you're like in straight sizing, that's a good option. Um, If you don't want to like invest in owning something, I don't know what their like plus size selection would have looked like. The people we were sitting behind were like very straight sized people. (laughs) But, um, um, and then we, uh, well, there was also like, varying levels of dress right like there were some people there that were not dressed up at all they were just there like Mm -hmm. they were going to the state fair yep um which is cool there were some people that were like very into the celtic theme it's like Mm -hmm. kilts and whatnot that was cool we saw some barbarians like D D level barbarians there was some cosplay happening there was a kratos from god of war um There's a lot of cool stuff in the cosplay mm-hmm. scene. And then there were some people that were just barely wearing any clothes at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I I just laughed cause in my head because I was like, it's funny. Like, here, totally fine. But if you were at a mall. Yeah. I think like part of it is. At a Walmart being, even. Mm. <laughs> part of it's being outside. Yes, that's true. Um, because it was so hot that day. That's true. Um, like, I totally get it. There was also <laughs> a spider, a Spider-Man in a maid costume. Uh, yes, that was uh, actually very cute. I think, I think I saw him last year, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a quite a wide variety of people Yeah. that go to Ren Fair. Sarah had some family there, and her dad had this all-black... <gasps> he looked like uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts, yeah. and he had that mask on the entire day. Brutal. I could not have done that. I know. That I, was such a baller move. I, I can't. Oh, my cloak was bad enough. I would not have been able to do a mask. My like. dress was bad enough, and it didn't have sleeves. Like it had, um, it had straps, but it was like sleeveless, and I was hot, yeah. and I didn't have anything covering my head, like my yeah. face, because yeah. I had a headband on. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But his, yeah, his, his, the, his costume was really cool too. Um, yeah, the overall crowds at, at Ren Fairs are pretty diverse, but it's it's mm-hmm. a fun time. Yeah. It's a fun group of people. Yes. Bunch Indeed. of nerds. Bunch of nerds. Um, so we already kind of talked about costume stuff. Oh, so yeah. did you have did you have a favorite um a favorite show, a favorite thing that we did while we were there? Well <laughs> so at lunchtime we ended up getting these like um they were really good. They were like cheesy. They were like a sausage, like a Polish sausage, kind of. Mm-hmm. And then they put um, nacho cheese on top of this pretzel bun and the sausage, and it was really good. Yeah, it's in a, it was in a pretzel bun. Yeah. yeah. So real quick, so was that your favorite food thing? Because I was also going to ask you if oh. you had a favorite food thing. Yes, that was my favorite food thing. And the reason okay, I'm mentioning so that now go. is because we were eating them. Mm-hmm. There weren't any tables available anymore, so we were sitting at this, um, like, one of the outdoor venue seating areas. Yeah, it's benches. a performance zone, but there yeah. there was no show happening at the right. moment. There were other people sitting at the benches eating, too, so right. it didn't seem weird, but, but yeah, go right. ahead. So then, like, as we're eating, the guy, 
for the ne- I didn't realize it was like just him for the next show. I thought he was like just trying to hype up the next show. Um, yeah. But turned out it was just him. <laughs> And he mm-hmm. was trying to get people to come to the show and then stay if you were already sitting in the event seating after you finished mm-hmm. eating to stay and was kind of like heckling us. And I had my back to the stage and we had like 15 minutes to finish eating, which we had. And then at that point it was like, oh man, now I kind of feel bad. We should just stay. <laughs> so we did. Yeah. Um, like mm-hmm. I think you also had your back to the stage. So you and I turned around. And he was so like, we were, oh my gosh, you're staying. Wow. Like, yeah, it we worked. <laughs> and then his show was so fun. It was a lot of fun, yeah. Um, it was so fun. He was a juggler. Um, I can't remember what the name of his show was. Harmless. Dan- oh, I don't. Uh, oh, yeah. Harmless, it was something harmless. Danger, juggling. I don't know. Yeah, because he was juggling like saw blades. and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was really fun. Stuff. It was really funny. Like it, it was, mm-hmm. it was a good show. Um, so I think that was, you know, the shows we saw at the end of the day were also really fun, but that was mm-hmm. so spontaneous and unplanned that it like ended up having a little special place in the day for me. Yeah. But it's funny how those, those spontaneous unplanned things can become one of the highlights of the day. Yeah. It's always fun. And actually the show ended up being pretty well attended. Like there were a lot of people there. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. Um, what was your Yeah, favorite? I really like that show. I really like that show, too. I think my favorite was probably, at the very end, the Cirque du Sewer. Uh, yes. The the cats and the the rats. Yes. I also really enjoyed that show. Had you seen that one before? No, I hadn't seen that one before. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then we it was the Fire Whip immediately before that. So that was those two shows were a fun way to kind of cap off the Agreed. day. Agreed. Yeah, no, those three I thought were really good. So mm-hmm. the juggler and then those last two. Um, yeah. I, but, you know, we also went to, like, a Celtic, like, bagpipe drum thing, like, to start off the day. That was kind of a nice, like, way to get yeah. things going. That was cool. Um, we went to an improv-type show, which was fun, except that I couldn't hear everything. Because they we were weren't sitting too far back. We were t- yeah. too far back. Um, and also, like, improv is, like, if you know the people that are doing the improv, I guess mm-hmm. way funnier, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah. Improv is a skill that yeah. takes uh, practice. And yeah, I know not all of them are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not all of them were, like, uh, particularly skilled at it. But right. um, it was still entertaining. For what yeah. we could hear. Yeah. Um, that one seemed like it might have been a little more uh, scrounged up, like amateur hour type. Not in like right. a bad way, but just right. in, in a, they were just trying to fill a time slot. That's kind of how it felt. <laughs> yeah. I, but, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that assessment. Um, yeah, there was, we went to the, um, the monster museum thing oh, yeah. where we got to go in and see, it was kind of like that Witcher style thing. Yeah. Um, where they've got all the different monsters like pinned to the walls and there's a fun yeah. little themed exhibit. My, um, we also went, my, oh, my ahead. favorite part of that was that there was also a dad with his like two little girls going through the museum and he was treating uh-huh. it like an actual museum. <laughs> yeah. Like showing the the girls the different monsters and like explaining them and I was like this is wild I love it. Mm-hmm. But I almost wondered if he was an employee at first. I was like, do you work at the rent fair? I don't and think you're so. You're like your your kids are visiting today. Is this bring your kids to work day? Because you're like selling this so hard. Like they don't even have to try the people that are working right now because right. you are right. doing such a good job of convincing your kids that this is all real. Uh, yeah, no, funny. I think he was just, like, having the time of his life, being yeah. a nerd with his kids. Mm-hmm. And his kids were um, so into it. They were, like, eating it up. It was really mm-hmm. cool. Uh, that was cool. We also went to go see um, the inappropriate poetry with <laughs> Arthur Greenleaf Holmes. We did. It was very funny. It was... It's very funny. It's wildly um, inappropriate. <laughs> it is... <laughs> pretty incredible how inappropriate you can be mm-hmm. without 
because it was still PG-16. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's pretty crazy how inappropriate you can be without actually using any swear words. Like, he did sometimes, yeah. but there were plenty of times where he wasn't using swear words at all. But yeah. it's just the context and his word choice was just even worse a lot of the time. Yeah. No, for <laughs> um, sure. It's impressive. Very, very talented. Very gifted. Very funny. Very funny guy. Um, yeah, so those are some of my, my highlights. Yeah. Drink some mead. That's always fun. I had fun. a sip of yours. I was worried about getting too Hydration. hot. <laughs> and yeah, no, I hear you. Um, so I had a That's I fine. had a Bellini slushy that was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With lunch. It was delicious. Yep. At one point I did get a, I got a blended cold drink too. And that's, hits the spot. Yeah. I got one in the afternoon too. Days. Um, but I really just wanted another one of those Bellini things. I should have just gone and found that booze, but I had no idea where that was. And I, mm-hmm. so <laughs> it's fine. Um, so tell me about some of the, so I, all the souvenirs that I had with me were ones that I had previously gotten. Um, and I got a lot of things in like preparation for it, but I didn't actually get much of anything when we were there because a lot of, but I'm, I'm fine with it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't hoping to buy something in particular. I, well, I wasn't looking for something specific like Sam with his hat. Um, but you got a few things. So yeah. tell, tell the, tell the people what, what cool souvenirs you picked up. So I also wasn't going in thinking of anything specific that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did end up finding a um, a necklace that's a little like red cap mushroom, and the stem is a mm-hmm. little like crystal, and it was so cute. And honestly, the guy reminded me of our dad. <laughs> um, yeah, and, like yeah. the way he like talked about his art and like it, it just reminded me a lot of our parents. So it was like it was like sculpting and, and yeah, that kind of thing. So yeah, it was nostalgic. And they're each made by in hand a way. and. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm into this. And I, I wanted something like small, but like pretty and cute. Um, mm-hmm. and I don't know that it's something that I will incorporate into like my regular <laughs> like jewelry, but I could, like, it's not like, yeah. it's not like Ren Faire only, I think. It could also make a good like decor thing. It, could, yeah. it would make a great ornament on a Christmas tree. Actually. That's true. It would. It's very cute. Now that I think about it. It is very cute, yeah. Um, and then I also got a scroll and holder. Um, and I think Which did, map did you get? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Did I get I think I got a, I think I got a small hobbit map. Like the Lonely Mountain map? I let me go grab it. Let or me go like grab the, it. Or like the I, map it, you you go grab it. Yeah, um because I looked at like three of them and now I can't remember which one I actually got. <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep talking while you're gone. So um, it's either going to be the map that's like in the front of the book, The Hobbit, where it shows like the Shire and the Misty Mountains and Mirkwood and the Lonely Mountain, or it's going to be just the map of the Lonely Mountain. Um, Or there was also a map of the Shire that I remember was there. Um, But yeah, there were there were a ton of maps from all sorts of different franchises in that map shop that are super, super cool. They're all like uh, water resistant, stain resistant. Um, they sell cool little leather cases with them too. Um, okay. She's back now. So, so what, what did you say while I was gone? Uh, Cause I couldn't hear you. Oh, I was just telling them about all the different maps that were in this map shop. Oh, cool. Um, and the three that it could be. Um, so we'll see which one it actually was. Um, so it is the, it is the lonely mountain. Cool. Okay. Desolation of Smog. Map. That's a really. Oh, that's really cool. It is really cool. It's small. It's really neat. Which I like, and I um, I think I'm gonna hang it on my wall in my office when it's not mm-hmm. with me at a Ren fair. Yeah, for sure. But it's really cool. Um, so you got the mushroom necklace. You got the map. Was there anything else you had gotten? Um, I did get a T-shirt at the very end. Right. Yeah. Um, I would I would have gotten a T-shirt, but they were really picked over. Um, it was a really busy, really busy weekend. You could have gone up a size. They had up a size for you, I think. But 
That's okay. I thought they didn't. They had two XLs. I feel that's too big. I feel like I'm wearing a like a boat sail when I go because it's like just too much fabric. I, it looks silly on me. Well, good for you. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> if I'm you kidding. wore a 4XL, you. <laughs> um, no, I'm just teasing. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sorry you didn't get a shirt because they were so picked over. We were there the no, last fine. weekend, so. There wasn't a specific shirt that I was like, oh, I have to have that shirt. But, um, anyway. There was probably some, like, weird fabric noise on the mic just then. It's because I was playing with the most valuable purchase of the day. Oh. Tell us what it is. It's a fan. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, I can see it, so I know, and I saw you use it all day. <laughs> After we bought it. I wish I would have gotten it yeah. earlier in the day. Um, Hope was smart and brought it. Brought yeah. a fan from home. You know what's dumb is I have fans at home. And I've just, it's never occurred to me to actually use them as a fan. Yeah. Um, yep. So so I have a, a Ren Faire specific fan. It's very pretty. But. Very cool. Yeah. Very fun. Um, is there anything that you saw that... If money was no object, mm. and if you went in, was there anything that you were like, "I want that, but it cost five hundred dollars"? Did you have any? <laughs> did you have any of those items pop up? Nothing that expensive. Um, there well, was. Well, I have one. Oh. Um, okay. While you're while you're thinking, um, I there was a hat in the hat shop oh. where <laughs> Sam okay. got yes. <laughs> got his. That was like a gray wizard hat. It was like a Gandalf hat, and it mm -hmm. had like the map of Middle Earth, like a laser etched into it. Mm -hmm. It was subtle. Like it wasn't like you would have to look and pay attention to it to see the Middle Earth map. So it wasn't yeah. like in your face um, or it didn't look patterned really, but it was there and it was really, really cool. But it yeah. was $450. <laughs> it was really cool. I forgot uh, about the hats. Yeah. Yeah. There was also a hat that looked like um, it was a hunter's hat from Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. And now I want Hope to make me a Bloodborne cosplay. <laughs> hey, there you go. I would wear the crap out of that at a Ren Faire or a con. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so did you see anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I didn't have anything that expensive. Um, but like towards the end of the day, Hope got a flower crown and there were some really beautiful flower crowns. Yeah. Um, but they were also expensive. Not like $500 expensive, but more than yeah. I was wanting to spend at the end of the day. So, um, uh -huh. you know, I think it, another fair, I will probably get a flower crown. Maybe the next one I go to. Um, there you go. Because there are some gorgeous flower crowns. There's also some cool, like, horns you can get mm -hmm. that are, like, like, make you look whimsical and yeah. fey like a satyr or something yeah um, yeah those are fun too yeah there's there's so much like fun stuff um and then i also went into a ceramics um shop right at the end and she had some really beautiful mugs um and i kind of collect mugs so i thought oh i'll get one of those mm -hmm. but they were also very expensive <laughs> And I'm not saying that they were not reasonably priced, because I think they were. I think that they matched, like, the skill level of the craft that she was selling. Like, I don't think she was overpricing uh -huh. at all. Um, sure. It was just more than I was wanting to spend at the end of the day, again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she had done, like, a glaze technique where the bottom isn't, the outside bottom, like, half of the yeah. mug isn't glazed. And I was a little concerned about washing that kind of ceramic mm -hmm. um but i ended up talking to our mom about it later and she thought it probably would have been fine so for next time if i see mugs like that you know and she had like bowls and other stuff like she had some really cool stuff yeah um so we yeah. should ask her um next time if we ever see her again um if she's a repeat vendor if yeah. i'm sure she i'm sure she gets that question a lot like how do you yeah. care for this thing yeah probably um um, so that was all of my questions mostly, but do you have any tips 
if anyone hasn't been to a Ren Fair and they would like to go to a Ren Fair, what are your words of wisdom? Now that you've been to one, um, what can they do to prepare? What would you tell them to do? Um, I would say make sure that you have a fan or like some way of fanning yourself. Keep an eye on what the temperature is going to be. Be careful with your footwear choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say, like, I didn't bring any hand sanitizer, but Sarah did. So, like, we were okay. But I you wish should. I had brought some hand sanitizer. <laughs> yeah. Um, and reapplying the sunscreen. Super important. Do not skip. Mm-hmm. So... I actually didn't get too badly sunburned. I was a little pink in the face the next day, but then by the following day, it was pretty much gone. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Those are all important things. And just have fun. Like let the whimsy of it. Yeah, man. Just take over. It's, it's escapist in nature. Yeah. Just let it, just let it happen. Just, yeah. Just enjoy the vibes and the, <laughs> all the, all the different shows and yeah, it's a good time. For sure. Um, I would also say um, make sure if you are dressing up in a costume, make sure that you have a plan for where to put your stuff, like mm. with your pocket situation. So yes. I had – my pants didn't have pockets, so I had to do this. But it was really handy. You get like a little belt – like a medieval-looking belt pouch that you can mm-hmm. put your wallet and your keys and your phone in. Yep. And that works really well. Yep. Um, so just keep keep that st- kind of stuff in mind. Um, I don't know if – if the Scarborough Fair has lockers that you can rent out, they might have. But I don't know. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Also, hydration is key. Yes. Um, have a plan for water, for sure. Especially, especially if you are over twenty-one and planning on drinking a lot of alcohol, I would mm-hmm. recommend keeping a good balance with the water because it's. I would think it'd be unless you're like camping there. That's another thing. Like camping at the Ren Fair is a whole other dynamic that can apparently kind of go off the rails depending on your campsite. So that's like you can camp at the Ren Fair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. For sure. I don't like camping enough. I don't think. I don't think you would have a good time. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Uh, no. Um, you would not have enjoyed that. <laughs> I don't. I'm not convinced I would have a good time with it. And like I've gone camping a lot. So it's true. You have. You've done a lot more camping than I have. Like, I know I've technically I could do it, but I don't think I would have a good time doing it. I've camped enough that maybe I'm okay not camping again. <laughs> yeah. You've had the opposite of the spectrum. Uh, for yeah. Sure. I don't mind the idea of glamping. Like, you know, a really nice RV. Yeah. Or like a cabin. Or a cabin. Yeah. Like, that's fine. It's the sleeping in a tent thing that I right. don't like very much. Something with some kind of air conditioning or shelter from the elements. And a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, anyway. always a, that's always uh, a tribulation. Trials and tribulations yeah. with camping. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's our, our trip to the Scarborough Ren Fair. It was lovely. I can't wait to go again. Yeah. Waxahachie, Texas. So... Yeah. Um, if anyone is listening, and I think it's still happening right now, they, I think they have a couple weekends left. Maybe oh, I thought we were I could at the be, last well, one. Well, actually, no, that wasn't the last one. Um, oh. No, I, I could be wrong. By the no, I'm I'm a hundred percent sure it wasn't. Um, okay, I'm a million percent. I but, mean, there are lots of other Ren fairs besides the Scarborough Ren Fair. So. Well, I'm just saying. I was going to say, if it's still going right now and you want to, that's where it is in Waxahachie. Um, oh. By the time this episode goes up, though, I don't... It might be over by the time this episode goes up. Well, you can plan but, for next year, guys. And there's one in the fall in Houston. It's one of the biggest rent fairs in the country. So uh, you can check that out. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's the rent fair. Um, so we can go into our our usual stuff. The, the watching, reading, playing. <laughs> Hit me with it. Okay. Um, for reading, it's a real small list this time, guys. Republic of Thieves, our read-along. Mm-hmm. Just finished Castle in the Air for Book Club. Lovely. Um, we're about to start the next one in the series, but not for a couple weeks, so I'm going to hold off on that. And... Um, I haven't been in class for the last two weeks, so I don't have any class books. 
And the class I'm taking this summer is like articles. So I'm going to actually get to read some books for fun. <laughs> Yay. Maybe, which I'm excited about. But I haven't actually yeah. done any of that yet because something else has been gobbling up my time. Uh, but before I get to that, watching uh, Demon Slayer. Uh, Gosh, is that the only thing I've been watching? Oh, and Critical Role. Thank you for yeah. <laughs> the time. Um, Critical Role <laughs> Campaign 3. Um, I, well, okay. I did watch this last week's episode, but I need to rewatch it because I was um, also playing Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild on the Switch. And it uh, turns out I cannot multitask playing a game and listening to an RPG game at the same time. So yeah, that's too much. I was trying to draw while I was watching and that didn't go well for me either. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I'll try again. I was doing like more intricate, like detailed stuff. So it, it just didn't work. But yeah. Maybe you were in the zone and yeah. Yeah. It's funny when you get in the zone, it's like other things just don't exist anymore. I mean, it was still great background noise. Matt yeah. Mercer's got a lovely voice. They all they do. All do. Yeah. So <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. Uh, but it turns out, like, from what I've seen online, it was kind of a big deal this episode. So I'm, um, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to have to rewatch that. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Yeah. Um, maybe I will do the same, except that I am playing Breath of the Wild. And <laughs> it's so good. And all I can think about when I'm not playing the game, is playing the game. I, I am coming to the realization that I have made a fatal flaw <laughs> of a decision to purchase a Switch while in grad school. Yeah, and having but a full-time job. It's fine. We'll get it sorted out. It's just a new toy right now, so it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wanted to know where I was at in the game, and I had some questions for you. Okay. I have... Um, this game has also, been out spoilers for forever. For, but yeah. Spoilers. If you haven't played Breath of the Wild and you don't want it spoiled, I would skip ahead. Skip okay. ahead. Um, I have conquered one divine beast, the elephant one. Oh, you met Mifa? Yes. In Sidon? Oh yes. my gosh. I love them. <laughs> They're so cute. Um oh. So now I have Mifa's Grace, which is great because I die a lot. <laughs> Dude, yeah, her ability is clutch. Um, um, I also yeah. went up to the... I, I, I put off cooking for a long time. Um, but now <laughs> okay. I'm kind of addicted to it because I um, ended up going up into an icy mountain to find this, the water spirit, whatever dragon thing oh yeah yeah i know exactly what you're um, talking about and it took me forever to get up there and i i ate through my entire supply of food because it hadn't been cooked so it wasn't like doing giving me the full benefit but i had eaten shame I ate, like i know it's because i wasn't cooking um yep so and then i uh i also ran out of arrows while i was up there so after yeah. I, like, I defeated it, but then in order to complete, like, the mission, you have to shoot it again to get a scale, and I didn't have any more arrows, so I chucked a spear at it. Did no, it work? No, it wasn't even a spear. It was just, like, some random weapon I had. It did work, which I was nice. very grateful for, because I was like, I don't want to have to come all the way back up here again, because, of course, you don't yeah. get the, like, spot to, like, pop up there automatically until after you do that. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the fast travel point yet. No. Uh, yeah. So I did that. Um, right now I'm just kind of aimlessly wandering around trying to find more shrines and towers because the divine beast thing was a lot and I need a break. Yeah. From doing that. Um, but the I dun it's cause it's like a dungeon. Like you get in yeah. the divine beast and then you've got to like solve this big intricate puzzle to yeah. fix it. And it's a whole thing. Well, and I, yeah, I um, I left because I like I ran out of something while I was in there. Like I ran out of, like all my weapons ended up broken. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, uh, okay. So then I left, mm -hmm. and then I couldn't figure out how to get back in there 
Because on the map, the elephant and the, like, fast travel spot were, like, overlapping. So when I would think that I was on the spot, it would just tell me I could select it, but it wouldn't let me actually go there. Oh, nuts. So I had to, like, look it up, and apparently, like, you just have to make sure you're on the the, the diamond. And shrine. The... the shrine's yeah. icon, not the divine beast icon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasted you. a lot of time trying to get back into that dang elephant. <laughs> so yeah. it was a little annoying. Um, and then it took me, I had to, like, look up how to do some of the puzzles, because I could not yeah. figure it out for the life of me. I have already, I've come across two in Tears of the Kingdom, because that's, I'm playing that, um, mm-hmm. that I'm going to have to look up because I cannot, I feel like I might be missing some abilities for those. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, continue. Um, um, okay. So speaking of Tears of the Kingdom, there have been things online and I swear I'm not looking at spoilers. Okay. The only reason I looked at it was because it was Korok and I like the little Koroks. Like the little like puzzly things, yeah. In Breath of the Wild, because I can yeah. spot them now. I'll be like, "Ooh, that's a Korok thing," and then I'll like move the bricks or whatever. Yeah. But there's like people online. <laughs> Do people not like the Koroks? Am I like an outlier? It's just become a meme at this point. Well, people that tried a hundred percent the game hate oh. the Koroks. Okay. Because you have to find all like ninety nine of them. And okay. it's super tedious and it's, it's really, it's just, yeah. So the people that want to hundred percent the game definitely do hate the Koroks. Okay. Um, and some of the, some of the puzzles are a little obnoxious, like yes. having to like run and, and find all the pinwheels and like, you're trying to chase after the flower that keeps disappearing and stuff. So no, I get it. But some of the. <laughs> The things in Tears of the Kingdom, because they made the some of the Koroks interactable, they've like got a backpack on and you can grab the backpack and like attach them to stuff. So now people are like launching them into space yeah, or like putting them on rotisseries. Yeah, I've seen some of those like compilation things. I'm like, wait, I thought they were cute. They are very oh, cute. No. I like, I think they are cute. I love, I love the maraca guy yes. that expands your inventory <laughs> yes uh Very no funny. i think i like the ones where you pick up the rock and they're under the rock mm-hmm. and then you found me but then if you drop the rock and it lands on them it's they're like Ugh. yes <laughs> like you bump that's my them. one that's my one piece of coral <gasps> abuse that i participated in. <laughs> the okay speaking of okay so the first dog i ran into was it like one of these stable things Uh And I wanted to pet the dog and I hit it with a sword on accident. It didn't die. It just got really mad. And then it was like attacking me. And I was like, I'm so sorry. So then I finally, I figured out how to get a piece of meat in my hand and I just held it near the dog and then I dropped it and it ate the meat and then it was nice again. But I was like, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. I just wanted to pet you. Why can't I pet you? That's sad. Yeah, the dogs, unfortunately, are not interactable, but you can watch them chase their tails sometimes <laughs> so if you cute. stare at them long enough. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> so in one of the villages, there's chickens. We're spending a lot of time talking about this, but it's been consuming my life, so I apologize. Mm-hmm. There are chickens, that you have to, but they call them something else. Cuckoos yeah, I don't know. or something. You're in, yeah, you're in the Sheikah village, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yes. And you have to find all the chickens and put them back in the pen. For Hate the guy. it. Hate I, it. I had nine of them. I couldn't find the tenth one for forever. I finally found it. I think I couldn't find it because there, when I first got there, I was like, look at this chicken. And I picked it up. And I was like, cool. And then I chucked it. Because <laughs> it's a chicken. Into the river. Yeah. No, no. I just like chucked it like, see it fl- flutter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I couldn't find it again to put it in the pen that yeah. it needed to be in. Um, but now they're free roaming. And so every once in a while, like I'll pick one up and put it back in the pen. But the guy doesn't care anymore. He's decided that they're just free range chickens. Whatever. For sure. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, now that they're free range chickens and he doesn't seem to care that they're out and about, maybe I could kill one and eat it. Like I could, I could, it's a chicken. I don't know. I don't know. No. Do you know what happens? You hit one of those stupid they, chickens, and they swarm you until you die. 
Incredible. All nine of, Love all it. ten of them pop up and they just peck the heck out of you. Nintendo you, knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I just, I didn't know all the other birds you can kill and cook. Yeah. And technically uh, you're a chicken, so. Too funny. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. It's such a great game. One I, of the best games yeah. ever. I'm spending a lot of time on it that I don't have. Yeah. I would recommend the Rito Village next with the flying divine beast. Well, is that, um, what direction is that in? West. Northwest. Okay. I've got most of the east side of the map filled in, but not a lot on the west side. Because I have to go back up in a snowy mountain over there. Right. Don't do the cold very good. <laughs> yeah. But once you get in there, you can um, buy an outfit that has cold resistance, which oh, is good. that's nice. Um, I did finally catch a horse and put it at a oh, stable. Lovely. I stole it from a bobkin. Bobbikin or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the horses, actually, now that you mention that, since you have a Breath of the Wild save... Mm -hmm. On your Switch, any horses that you have stabled from Breath of the Wild, once you go to play Tears of the Kingdom, they're still there. No way. And I had all my horses still. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Super cool. So, okay. Anyway. So, Tears of the Kingdom, is it set in, like, are you on the same map? Um, uh, it's the same location. It's okay. still in Hyrule. And it's, this, and it's the same storyline as breath of the wild so it it is after breath of the wild yes okay but do you have to go um, and like find all the maps again yes yeah. <laughs> uh, are the shrines and things in the same places no <laughs> <laughs> of course not <laughs> and it'll make sense once you play it eventually okay. um no that's but, fine i was just curious if you have to go through the whole like finding it's the map is the same but also so much bigger. It is huge, and you'll understand what I mean later. Honestly, like, the videos and things that I've seen of people, like, which we can save this for when you're talking about what you're playing, but, um, like, the custom ability of things seems yeah. a little overwhelming, honestly. I have not, yeah, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that with my, okay. with my playing thing. You're right. Um. Is that the end of your list, though, for what you've been doing? Yeah. See? Okay. Not a long list for once for me. Because <laughs> all um, I'm doing is playing a video game. Yep. Love it. Love blink, it. Blink, blink, blink. Um, <laughs> so, for me, watching Demon Slayer... Uh, oh, this is something that I don't think you mentioned. We finished Violet Evergarden. Oh, yeah, we did. Which was super good and so sad yeah. and but like also good. It was it was it was really good. It has a I'm good glad ending. We it. Yeah. It does. I'm glad we watched it. And it's so pretty. Um, beautiful animation. Like some of the best animation mm -hmm. you'll you'll get in anime. Um yeah. very good. Also, uh Vinland Saga, still watching mm -hmm. the new episodes of that on Netflix. And also Critical Role Campaign Three. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Um, that's pretty much it for watching, I believe. Am I forgetting something? Did I go see a movie recently? No, we thought about going to see the new Guardians movie, but then oh. it just never happened. Did you ever um, see the D&D &D movie? Yes, yeah. Oh, I did. Had I ever mentioned that? Well, we we did. It was good. You should. You should. It was actually really, really good. Um, yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun one. Uh, so, that's it for my watching. For reading... Uh, the Republic of Thieves for the read along. Uh, I actually finished Ruby Red while you were down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was a really quick read, but no, it was it was, it was intriguing, like time travel-y yeah. uh, stuff. Are you gonna read so, the next no, one? So that's fun. I might. I think. I just hate that. So okay, I'm spoiled because I can spend one audible credit on mm. a big fat chunky fantasy novel and it'll last me for like a really long time yeah so i've gotten too greedy with my audible credits but then i get a book like that and it's like it's like i'm pretty sure it's ya it's way shorter uh it did not last as long 
So I'm like, man, there's three of them. I'm going to burn three credits when normally that amount would have only burned one credit. <laughs> Here's what you need to do. This will help you. Read the physical book because I have it at home. <laughs> well, no, but yes. Um, no, you need to go to your library. We visited Joseph's library and it's gorgeous. But oh. you need to go to your library and get a library card because when you have a library card, libraries have online digital content that you can check out and that includes audiobooks. And it's our library here uses Hoopla, but your library might mm-hmm. use like Libby or whatever. But um, that's cool. But and they're free. So that's then actually... you so then you can decide: Do I want to? You'll check the library first to see if they have it available for free for you to check out as an audiobook. And then if they don't, you can go spend an Audible credit. That is really good to know. Yes. Um, it's almost like you're getting a degree in this stuff. I mean, I knew this before. But yeah, PSA. Yeah. Your library has audiobooks that you can check out. Mm-hmm. Just get yourself a membership. Uh, very cool. So also still reading The Promised Neverland. Um, I'm mm. through mm-hmm. volume 12, I think of like the, the volumes, um, I, I think, or 11. So I'm over halfway and loving it. So chiming in on that last time we talked about how I had watched promise Neverland and you were reading it. And I just want, I know mm-hmm. the readers, not the readers, the listeners are dying to know, um, season one, pretty accurate to the books. And then once we got done with season one content, just flipping through the manga it was like, oh, nope, this is different. And I stopped. <laughs> so season two, not very accurate. Season one, really good. Um, Confirmed. I, I would recommend picking up the manga um, because it is very, very good. Yeah. It's very, I mean, very season good. one is... Season two is also good. It's just very different from what happens in the manga. Yeah. So. Um, so. And also, I am totally caught up on solo leveling for as far as the volumes go for that, so I've got to wait nice. now for the next one to drop. Well, that explains why um, you couldn't find the volume you were looking for. Yeah, no, it's all up to date. So for, but like I had seen the art for it, but it's because like it has a release date; it's just not out yet. Right. So, so the chapters have come out; it just hasn't been printed yet. I assume probably somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Just like um, My Hero Academia has the. Like, yeah, they're way the, more. The you can be following it. Are, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so for my playing, we actually got to play some board games while you were down here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, sorry. I should have played... mentioned those, but I'm glad you are. Yeah. So we played Star Wars Villainous, which was fun. It was fun. Um, that's getting a new expansion sometime in, in the future um, called like Scum and Villainy or something. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of bounty hunter, mercenary type theme. Yeah. Did you win? Did I win? Um, I believe you won that because I won here to slay. That's true. And um, we were really, but I feel like it was really close with villainous between you and I. I think it was, gonna it was really close. It was really yeah. close because I was going to win the next, tur- the next time it That's hit right. my turn. That's right. Um, and then you managed to get it. So there was that, there was here to slay, which is made by the same people as unstable unicorns and exploding kittens and all that. And it was um, so fun. That's very fun. It's kind of like a, a dungeon crawl type experience, but with yeah. two little animals, you build yeah. your you build your adventuring party. No, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. It was like a little overwhelming, like to figure out exactly how all the pieces go together. But then once you actually start playing, I feel like a lot of those games, the directions make it seem like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a lot. But but once you start, it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we played a couple rounds of Dominion. That's always fun. I love that game. I always forget how much I love that game until I we know. play it. Um, such you a used good to game. play that all the time. Yeah, I played it a lot in college. It's such a good deck builder. Yeah. It's... Well, and then like when you lived here, when I was yeah, like decks. that's where I first played it was when I was in college, and then mm-hmm. I you got a copy back. and brought it back. Yeah. Um, and then we played it a lot at home. We also played Tiny Epic Vikings, which I had gotten as a gift from Sam and Sarah. Um, and that was fun. Mm-hmm. I sucked at it. And I... Uh, <laughs> but it's my fault because you were needing to focus way more on, like, which deity you were trying to please. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, like Odin or Thor or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was just trying to, like, build ships and temples and stuff and i wasn't paying attention to that at all so yeah, i lost you were, you were playing it like Catan, where like you I get was. points for all that stuff and you don't 
you don't. I mean, you get benefits, but none of no them points. are like none of them are win condition type right. benefits. Right. I was playing the long game. If the game was longer, I had a chance. Um, but it but, wasn't. <laughs> of course, Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. Um, it is currently the highest rated game on a Metacritic or something like that, hmm. like ever. It's like taken over TikTok and online and all this. It's it's such a good game. Yeah. Um, I have been loving it. I have beaten one of the main areas. It does follow a similar pattern to the previous game where you kind of go into these different areas and doing these different things like you did the Divine Beast yeah. with the Zora. So the game suggests that you start with the Rito up in the mountains, um, the bird oh. people. Am I for supposed this one. to be? Oh, okay. I didn't recall for, for... there being a direction. No, no, no. It's just like I'm talking one. for Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> okay. They're like, oh, you should go there. And then I did. So um, I have beaten the first area. Nice. And it was such a good experience. Um, the boss was crazy. Um, like, I, it was a very dramatic boss entrance, and it was awesome when you finally beat it. And the cutscene afterwards made me a little emotional. Oh, no. <laughs> like, there's there was a moment where, like, Zelda's theme plays behind her and doing something, and it's, it was just, like, Aww. it was too perfect. And it was just a really, it was a really emotional moment. But it was, it was really good. I love this game so much. I love video games. <laughs> this, <laughs> so, uh, wait, so are you playing as Zelda or as Link in this one? No, you're still playing as Link. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But the cutscene had Zelda, Zelda doing stuff, and gotcha. it was... Um, it was so good. Also, one of the voice actors for one of the characters is the same voice actor as Kilawa from Hunter x Hunter. <gasps> and that was so fun. <laughs> um, you'll know sometime when yeah. you play it. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm a ways out. I got a lot of game to play. You just got to conquer three more Divine Beasts and then kill Ganon. You're fine. It's like a week away for you. <laughs> yeah there's did you say a week away for me yeah it's fine you're so <laughs> you're so ambitious for me <laughs> oh man uh no so yeah tears of the kingdom it has a lot more customization stuff there's more they've in, they've incorporated like crafting so you can stick things together and like build stuff with some of your powers now and it's very uh involved i haven't delved too deep into that but i really don't think you have to to be okay. able to enjoy the game i have enjoyed the game plenty without building stealth bombers out of out yeah. of boards and fans <laughs> like okay. well that makes you feel better because like one of the things with minecraft that i would get hung up on is that i would get so like stuck in whatever little thing i was trying to do Mm -hmm. that it would totally derail me. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm concerned that, like, getting caught up in, like, the crafting aspect of it would, I would just never, I would never progress. I would just get stuck trying to build something that you actually yeah. can't build. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So if that's yeah, not no, a requirement, crafting... that's cool. It's also, there's no, like, recipes like in Minecraft. It's just, here's a bunch of stuff that you can stick to each other. That's true. And you just do it. So it's, okay, well, it's different. It's, it's very different from Minecraft. It's, it's more, like, from what I've seen about, like, Fortnite, it seems more kind of like that. But also still different. I don't know. It's unique. Like, you don't go into a little grid and have to put the elements in the exact right spots to get the exact thing you want. No. You no. know what? The cooking in uh, Breath of the Wild, where you just, like, guess and hodgepodge putting things together. Very fun. That's pretty fun. That is fun to do. Yeah. And the little music that plays. Also fun. Um, anyway, sorry. Link in, in Tears of the Kingdom, Link hums while he cooks. <gasps> and he hums. I noticed the first time when he started humming, he hums the theme songs from different Zelda games. And That's it is so, so cool freaking cute like oh it was so good like the first time he was cooking and like there's the normal cooking sounds like with the clinking and stuff and i mm -hmm. hear him go and i just hear him go 
Uh, he does it like just enough to where it's like a little bit different, but you can still tell what it is. He was like, dun, da, 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 like while he was cooking. Aww. And there was a, there was another time where he like did one of the Ocarina of Time songs. He did the Gerudo Town song. Yeah. Um, it was so cute. It was so cute. I love it. That's awesome. It's adorable. So there's a there's so many little Easter eggs that they put in this game, and ugh, I love it. I love it so much. I'm having a great time. <laughs> so that's that's what's been consuming my life. Um, that's what we've been doing. Nice. So yeah. So I guess um, next week will be another read along. Yes. So catch up on that if you haven't. We're already over halfway th- done with the book, but true story. Um. Yeah. So. That's what's going to be next week. And we can, for our next podcast episode, we can give you more updates on where we are on these Zelda games. <laughs> and once, honestly though, once we're, once you're done with Breath of the Wild, I kind of want to do an episode just talking about Breath of the Wild. Okay. Because yeah, totally. <laughs> it's such an amazing game. I um, mean, I feel like I didn't get into any of like real spoilers. I'm sure like, you As haven't. far as story goes, I just mentioned the Divine Beast, which you find out about those pretty early on. So, yeah, and yeah, the dragon. Like, I guess I revealed you have to shoot the dragon at the end. So make sure you've got an extra arrow or something to chuck at it. <laughs> it's not the only dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Have you seen? Have you seen yes. some of the other ones that just yes. pop out of nowhere? Yeah. Spooky. Yeah. Well, I saw one um, crawling. Ar- well, it's not a dragon. I guess I don't know what it is. It's probably a guardian that's crawling around the oh, volcano. Uh, yeah, that's one of the divine beasts. Yeah. And I thought, not today. We're going to go do something else first. <laughs> I would, so you can do it whatever order you want, right? I did Mifa with the elephant, and then I did, I forget his name, but the, the bird dude with mm-hmm. the Rito, the Sarit. one that flies around. Um, it's not Sarah. That's an, a Calamity reference. Sorry. Oh, okay. An and EXU the, Calamity. It's Travis's character. Yeah, Sarit, pretty much. The bird. That's pretty much it. Um, and also then I did the volcano and then I think I did the Gerudo one with the camel out in the desert. That's the big guy. So is that the big guy? Huh? Is that the big guy? Big guy. Big camel. Oh no. The, 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 um, the volcano people. Oh my gosh. You just made me blank on what they're called. Um, they eat rocks. But they big. do eat rocks. They look like big rocks. It totally lost me, but it's okay. okay. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So, okay. But you can do, you can go fight Ganon right now if you want to. Just go beat the game, Anna. No. Go beat it. No. Just run into that castle, beat him. No, I so much of the story. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I will say the part where you have to like find, you get the pictures and you have to find the locations of the pictures. I don't enjoy that very much. But I love getting the cutscenes. I love getting the cutscenes, but figuring out where I've what it is is stressing me out. Yeah, there's an aspect like that in Tears of the Kingdom, but I think they executed it better. I'm not very good at it. Um, so far. I'm not gonna spoil it, but that's okay. Anyway, that's okay. That's my one critique. So so far, and that you can't pet the dogs. And you can't pet the dogs. I hate to inform you that I still can't pet the dogs in Tears of the Kingdom. But... <laughs> tragically um anyway so that's what we've been up to uh we will pick up this conversation next time we talk about what we're playing yeah Uh, i guess until next time go play a zelda game (laughs) until next (laughs) talking too late what do i say excuse you (laughs) gosh my brain just like full out shut down okay Uh, and we'll talk to you next time there you go there it is (laughs) Later. Bye. (laughs) Oh, Lord.